On today's show, even when it screws up, Honda never gives up. A guy in a garage could disrupt Silicon Valley's autonomous efforts, and FCA is out searching for more tax. All that more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for December 21st of 2015. A decade ago, Honda jumped into the compact pickup segment in the American market with the introduction of the Ridgeline. It was a complete flop. The base price was more expensive than all other full-size pickups, and it looked weird because the sides of the bed were set at an awkward angle. But even when it screws up, Honda never gives up. So it's coming back with an all-new design and just released this teaser image. As you can see, the bed now looks like it belongs to a normal pickup. And there's a brake line between the cab and bed to make it look more like a traditional truck. Honda will officially unveil the Ridgeline at the Detroit Auto Show next month. And then it will run an ad in the Super Bowl to make sure millions of people are aware it's back in the market. Honda's Acura brand was heavily criticized a couple of years ago for its goofy styling. Critics especially hated the grill. And while Acura cleaned up the look of the front end of its cars, the brand has never been in danger of winning any styling awards. Now it hopes to change all that. It's going to unveil what it's calling the Acura Precision Concept at the Detroit Auto Show. It's an all new form language that sets the styling and proportions we're going to see in all future Acuras, especially its sedans. Hey, have you heard of this guy who developed his own autonomous car all by himself? Not only that, he's taking a completely different approach than all other companies getting into this technology. His name is George Holtz. He's something of a computer whiz, being the first person to ever hack into an iPhone. Now he's using artificial intelligence to develop his own autonomous system. So instead of writing millions of lines of code to tell the car what to do, all he does is drive the car around and the car learns how to drive by watching him. He retrofitted an Acura ILX with off-the-shelf components and came up with an impressive demonstrator. Check out the link in today's show notes because this guy could be a disruptive force amongst all those tech companies who thought they were the disruptors. Still to come, Uber signs a big contract with a Chinese car company. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. The need for finding good talent to work in the automotive industry is not just limited to the engineering, design, and manufacturing side of the business. FCA projects it will need to add more than 5,000 mechanics to its U.S. dealerships by 2018. So the automaker established a new program that will train approximately 1,000 students annually and it just added 20 colleges to its network of certified training sites. The plan is to add another 30 to that list in 2016 and reach more than 100 certified colleges by 2018. Chinese automakers have benefited from forming joint ventures with more established auto manufacturers, but now they may be looking for the same kind of boost with ride sharing. Guangzhou Automobile just signed plans for a strategic cooperation with Uber in China. Up to now, Uber has only used privately owned cars to provide rides. So it's fascinating to see it join up with a car company. We need to keep an eye on how this develops because if this makes good business sense for Guangzhou, we can expect to see other car companies want to get in on the action. Coming up next, After Hours takes on a decidedly musical turn. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work, Dow. To help us get in the holiday spirit on last week's Auto Line After Hours, we were joined by the Motor City Corral, which was formerly a choir for GM employees and traces its roots back to 1933. Just in case you have not watched the show yet, here's a quick sample. Oh, 
John and Gary, along with Mark Phelan from the Detroit Free Press and Scott Burgess from Yahoo Autos, handed out presents and lumps of coal to various people in the auto industry. To see who they skewered and who they praised, check out that show right now on our website, autoline.tv, or check it out on our YouTube channel. That wraps up today's show. Thank you for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.